In 1415, Henry V led the English into battle against the French. Historians have always put this triumph down to the most feared weapon in Europe, England's trump card, the longbow. But new research is beginning to tell quite a different story. So Henry's army was mostly made up of archers. But they were there because they were cheap, not because of their skill. So what was it about the longbow that gave these men the power to overcome vastly superior numbers? It's a very simple weapon to use. You draw your bow back, the full draw, then the energy stored in that bow is tremendous. The secret of the longbow's power lies in what it's made of, a unique combination of two types of wood growing naturally within a single tree, the yew. On the outside, the elastic sapwood, on the inside, the rigid heartwood. The heartwood on its own would break, but the sapwood is a tension wood, in other words, a stretchy wood, and the sapwood stops the heartwood from breaking. The longbow is not only easy to use, It also has a quality that could help a small army make up for a shortage in numbers. The archers would have had what I would call ready arrows. They were shooting off anywhere between 8 to 12 arrows in a minute. As long as they can do that, they can put this blanket firepower down. What gave the longbow its crucial advantage was the speed with which it could be shot. It was four times as fast to reload as other weapons of the time, such as the French crossbow. The longbow is not an accurate weapon as such. It's a, it's a weapon of mass firepower. You're pushing as many arrows over as you can and causing as much havoc as possible. There were 5,500 English archers each losing an average of 10 arrows a minute. So in the opening moments of the Battle of Agincourt, 55,000 English arrows would have rained down on the French knights. Henry's archers could clearly create a storm of arrows, but what damage did these arrows do when they reached their targets? With a high-speed camera, the energy of an arrow leaving a longbow can be accurately calculated. A bodkin arrow weighing 63 grams records a speed of 37.9 meters per second. The energy arrived at in mathematical terms is 38 joules. To see what would have happened when a bodkin point met armor, this result is fed into a high impact machine. It recreates the crucial moment. At the receiving end, a piece of two millimeter thick mild steel, equivalent to the metal of the day. Although Henry's archers and the French knights are long gone, 600 years later, a bodkin point once again tries to penetrate armor. and fails. The weaker English bodkin arrow simply buckles when it hits the steel. There is no way it would have gone through French armor. So the mounted knights coming towards Henry's archers would have been very unlikely to have been killed or even injured by arrows from the longbow. Moreover, the legendary use of the longbow and the hail of arrows only account for the opening minutes of the battle. The fighting at Agincourt continued for another two hours. The longbow, 
simply could not have been the decisive weapon history has claimed.